we want to share with you some of the creativity that came bubbling up from the people who took part in the Stories on Prescription project. The project enabled a small team of storytellers to tell stories by phone, tell stories by Zoom, and also to go out to people's gardens, to stand on their decking and on their doorsteps, tell stories through the window or at the door. Even better, people then shared their stories with us, their poetry, their writing, their life stories. This is a story of Avayar, and Avayar was an old woman. But she was poor and she still had to work if she wanted to eat. She didn't have any land of her own, so she lent out her, her labour to other people. So she would go and work on other people's farms on their land. And on this particular day, she'd been planting rice. And if you've ever planted rice, you'll know it's really back-breaking work and she had to stoop down. Oh, it really made her back ache. She could only do so many hours. And then at the end of the day, after she'd been planting rice all day, she was walking home. And even though her back was aching, she still noticed how beautiful the sky was. There were streaks of pink and the palm trees were silhouetted against the sunset. And the cows that wandered freely along the lanes, their bells were swinging in a symphony of cow bells. She thought how beautiful it was, but all the same, everything was aching and twinging and hurting. And then she saw a temple. She saw the wall of a temple and her, she perked up a little sometimes at the temples there would be free food. Some of the temples would, would have great cauldrons of rice where they would give food to anyone who was hungry. So she hurried into the courtyard. No sign of any food. But there was a big old tree. Or a lot of trees. It was very beautiful. And so she thought, oh, I'll just rest here a while. I'm sure they won't mind. So she sat down on the ground and she oh, leant back against that tree. And oh, if I've got to room to do it, but her back was aching. So she stretched her feet out, pointing her feet as far as she could. And the next, oh she, oh, she was so tired, she actually closed her eyes. She fell asleep. Next thing, old woman, old woman, and someone's shouting at her. And she opened her eyes, and there's a young priest come out of the temple. Old woman, you're pointing your feet at the god. That is so disrespectful. For in that culture, the feet were considered dirty. And when she looked, there was a little god in a little shrine. And Avayar's feet were pointing right at the god, and she thought for a while and she said, a young man, I'm sorry if I seem disrespectful. And she looked all around at the trees, the sky, the clouds, and she said to the young man, tell me in which direction there is no God, and there I will point my feet light under the moon and the stars like the stars on a winter's night the way they go so much crisper and sharper in the frosty breath of the giant and the northern lights have you ever seen the northern lights oh enough to move you to tears and there they are like a pale green arc moving of their own volition like ancient gods in the sky and the giant the giant is such a good storyteller and he lures Guskat back into the tent with his stories, his stories of when the world was pure, brilliant white, before the coming of man. Such a terrible, pure, stark, beautiful white brilliance and Glooscap begins to get sleepy, begins to get drowsy and the giant's voice is mesmerising and Glooscap, he feels that kind of weariness that men feel before they lie down in the snow to die and he sinks into a deep slumber, soon he's sleeping as deeply as a bear 
hibernating in his winter den and his heartbeat slows right down. He's in a coma of cold and he would have died at his own magic not being so powerful. It's new. You've just begun. Keep dreaming, child. Stay safe and free. Become who you were meant to be. Become who you were meant to be. Crow entered into the task with great enthusiasm because crows are clan creatures who will try to lift a fallen companion. They may not sing with melodious grace, but if you're counted among them, their hearts are full of feathered love. Storm post-mortem. Storm battered and bruised by disappointments. Letting go of striving, struggles and stress. Confess to wasted effort depletion and stuckness. Surrender to temporary inaction. Relaxation. Time to research options and explore flaws. Conserve meagre resources, life's precious essence. Recharge and restore. Balancing. The ins and the outs the ups and the downs, the clowns and the frowns, of how to optimise and utilise Earth's rich experiences and stores. My mother's great routine is the most embarrassing of all. You can't imagine the things you can get up to with grapes. John can't keep his eyes off her. Dora becomes a lecturer. Don't you just love? Grapes. She sinks voluptuously to the floor beside the coffee table. My great dance when I played Salome is still remembered. First she breaks off individual grapes and eats them suggestively. Then she starts to hum, picks up the whole bunch, writhing and eating. Finally, she rises and sways round to John, sliding the grapes across his face. Door changes back to herself snatches the grapes and puts them down. Normally at this point she would lead her victim up to the bedroom. John's got a very odd look. Is he choking? He's laughing. He's actually laughing. Laughing at the fairest of us all. I could hug him. Priceless. What a comedian. So funny. Our lecturer isn't happy but she pretends and plays up the comedy to save face. One day, Raven was standing at the edge of a small cove, staring out into the horizon. And off in the distance, he spotted a tiny speck moving towards him. And as it grew closer, he could see it was a whale. Raven wanted to know everything there was to know about the whale and so he pulled out his kayak, climbed in and sent it skimming across the waves. And as he drew closer and then level with the whale, he found himself staring into the eye of the great beast. And looking back at him was the very beginning of time and its end. Owl, with your voice alone, you can do it, no need for foe. Take guide and torch to a night wood, he'll call you back as good owls should. Spread your wings, you're flying. How? Impossible things can happen with bucket and spade Close to the sea, your day is made Treasure is hiding down on the beach Shells, stones, all you can reach Hello Beetle, I made you on this paper You say who I am Beautiful as a flower garden 
Look at my sweet face, peaceful and eager to know. A beetle body of beauty follows us, a cloud of colour, seas softened, green, blue, grey, jewel bright floral fragments. A treasure chest, in fact. I am loved by everyone. My pointy feet go in all directions. Everyone wants me to visit. Come and visit, Biko. So we do. You take me all over, Biko. You show me fancy's road. Motherless waters. To love and be loved is my soul's purpose. To seek expression of this love. To be loving and lovable again. Escape. Flight of fantasy. Iridescent wings. Fluttering, fanning out, floating high on warm azure blue currents. Gracefully dipping, twirling, clipping, soft, fluffy clouds. Delighted and suspended, joyously spreading out on coastal breezes. Mother Earth's waters. To love and be loved is my soul's purpose to seek expression of this love to be loving and lovable again to survive criticism storms of passion sorry I've gone wrong that's all right I'm because sorry. i cut your nose off <laughs> <laughs> so a big thank you for those beautiful and inspiring contributions from aileen Miriam, Elliot, Kitty, Rachel, June, and many more who shared their stories with us. All of us connecting by sharing our stories with each other at a time of great isolation. Stories are very good for your health. Mm -hmm.